We're here today to show our support for bills of equal protection, specifically House Bill 2709 and Senate Bill 2198, followed by Representative Hall, and, uh, Representative Slayton and Senator Hall, respectively. These bills are the only bills that have been filed in the Texas State Legislature that would actually provide equal protection under the law for preborn children and would actually have any meaningful effect on saving lives in our state. Prior to the overturning of Roe v. Wade, there were 55,000 legal recorded abortions that took place in Texas on an annual basis. This year, 30,000 women will travel out of state, Texas residents, to get abortions in other states, and almost 20,000 will actually get abortions here on Texas soil, uh, primarily using abortion pills. But the reality is that every single preborn child in this state can be legally murdered under the law as written. So we have legislators in here who are claiming that abortion has already been abolished, who are spouting off uh, fallacious statistics about the abortion rate being down by 97%, which is completely false. At best, the abortion rate in, by Texas residents has probably fallen about 5%. And so providing equal protection is the only biblical way, consistent with God's word and his standard of justice, and, and additionally, the only practical way that we're actually going to end abortion in the state. Um, so uh, that's a lot to... different than what I've heard inside yeah. that house. So in that house, <laughs> I'm, sure is. I'm hearing things like, "Hey, abortion is abolished. It's right. done. There aren't any abortion clinics open." Yep. Now, what you're saying is that that that's not true. Not true. Why at do all. you think that they're under this illusion that that abortion is is completely yeah. abolished? Well, there are a number of pro-life organizations who have um, spearheaded efforts to craft laws that that regulate abortion. Um, but in rea you know, when the reality is they regulate it, but what they go and they tell people is they tell people that this actually abolishes abortion because I think there's this perception that, you know, abortions are, um, you know, events that take place within a clinic by an abortionist um, and that once we eliminate that, then um, the issue is, is solved. And right now it's very much out of sight, out of mind, but, you know, the, the time the method and the direct perpetrator may have changed, but the reality is that our preborn neighbors, um, human beings created in the image of God from the moment of fertilization, are still being savagely and brutally murdered, yeah. and they have and they have no legal protections under the law, no meaningful protections. So, if you were to talk to a legislator and you were to tell them about this bill, why tell them real quick? Why should they put their name on this bill? Well, first and foremost, out of obedience to God. Proverbs 24:11 is abundantly clear on this. It says to rescue those who are being taken away to death and to hold back those who are stumbling to the slaughter. For if behold, we say we did not know these things, does not he who weighs our hearts perceive it? And that the Lord will judge us according to our works. So God knows that we know there's a genocide going on in our land. Our land is soaked in the blood of infants. Our country bears a blood guiltiness for the genocide. And so as a legislator, they're uniquely positioned to obey the Lord and to glorify Him, um, to do their part to fight to end the shedding of innocent blood, and to abdicate that responsibility, especially um, while professing Christ, while professing to know Christ, as many of as many of the legislators do. And we're grateful for that because we feel like it gives us an, an avenue through which we can, you know, just you know, say, hey, this is what God's word says. If you're a Christian, you should care. And that should be your 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 ultimate concern, um, but that would be number one. And number two, um, you know, to, number one being to just you know follow your your Proverbs twenty four eleven responsibility. It's a command. It's not a ask. It's not you know God would like you to do this. It would please Him for you to do this. Um, but you know, it's a command and it's non negotiable, especially if you're a legislator who God has put in a position of authority over the state to make decisions. And number two. Um, this is the only way that we're actually going to meaningfully bring abortion numbers down and save babies. So a lot of legislators, you know, I've had legislators tell me that, you know, they care more about saving babies than they do about being obedient to God's word. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of been the mantra of the pro-life movement. Certainly save for the last babies no matter years. what. Yeah, save babies no matter what. But, but the reality is that their approach, which is not a biblical approach, it's a man-centered, pragmatic approach, that approach is not going to save babies. And, it, and it's not. Um, not in the long and, run. You're right. And, and, and the reality is that it just so happens that the biblical approach to solving this problem 
is actually also the approach that is going to save the most lives. So um, yeah, I would just I would just call on. I mean, everyone has repentance to do in this area. Everyone does, whether it's myself of apathy in the past, where you know I wasn't keeping my preborn neighbors top of mind, or the legislators in there, many of whom have done a lot more than most of us to you know fight abortion. Um, you know, I think it's hard to have that conversation with them that, hey, like, you need to repent of your, your pragmatism, your incrementalism, you know, repent of the abdication of justice, yeah. um, and, um, you know, just sort of let people know there's room for that repentance and that, you know, we have a God who forgives, and if you put your faith in Christ, um, and if you, if, you, uh, uh, if you allow him to be Lord of your life, not just Savior, but Lord, um, and you uh, live to glorify him, to honor him, and to obey him, then there's going to be grace for you. Um, and it's not too late to repent and turn around. It's not too late for the post-abortive mother to repent um, and to find that, that, that healing, that grace, that salvation in Christ, um, but only through repentance. And that's the other thing, is that you know, the incremental approach, which basically expunges women of any consequence whatsoever, um, that you know, if we're if we're Christians and we don't, you know, we don't demand a just law, which equally protects people and children, we're also doing women a disservice because, you know, how can we pre credibly preach the gospel to a woman who's had an abortion when we're saying that perhaps the most grievous sin that she's you know committed that it was just she was a victim and that she has nothing to repent for that's what you're saying when you when you say the law does not apply to you. Um, so, on top of that, you know, pro-life movement likes to talk a lot about protecting women, which is admirable. But the reality is that the laws that they wrote, which are now in effect, don't protect women at all. In fact, they, it's still legal because because it's still legal for a woman to take an abortion pill um, and abort her own preborn child as long as she does it herself. It's also therefore not illegal for someone to pressure her into doing that, aware that um, it's not it's not uh you know it's not illegal to pressure someone to do something that's not illegal so of course you're still going to have uh, abusive boyfriends fathers maybe even husbands in some cases who are going to put pressure on women to get abortions and you know women will be getting abortions under duress um, which which by the way under the, these laws they would not you know face criminal penalties for um, just because just the way you know, when people commit crimes against born people that are under duress or when there's, you know, a, a case of mistake of fact where someone legitimately didn't know what they were doing. Like, there's, our law has has, uh, has protections for, for those people. And yeah. so, 